Hi, I'm Andy Sutton and I'm director of Smoke Without Fire, the story of the electronic cigarette. I've worked in TV for 15 years and I've also been a vapor for five. When I found out about the EU's plans to regulate electronic cigarettes as medicines, I decided to get interested in the story behind the e-cig. The European Parliament is trying its best to define these things as medicines. This legislation is now being, is now being pushed through at a fast rate and the, uh, the rapporteur, the, the team leader for the European Parliament, Linda McCavan, is taking the, taking, the, taking the lead in pushing it through as fast as she possibly can. And I think this is very, very unfortunate because the potential health benefits of e-cigs are not sufficiently widely appreciated. You, you've heard about uh, leveling the playing field. Yes, but what they mean is leveling the playing field with uh, the nicotine gums and patches, and this is in the advantage of the pharma industry who doesn't want to see a competitor. The right way to um, regulate e-cigarettes is as consumer products. I mean, it's ridiculous to regulate them as medicines. They're not medicines, not in common sense and not in law. They're not used for treatment and the people selling them aren't selling healthcare products. The MHRA, when it enacted it all, would be quite within its rights to say, right, everything that's on the market now that doesn't already have a marketing authorisation, within 21 days it's got to be off the shelves. These would be outlawed. These would become medicines. Effectively, they would be banned. In April 2013, I started a crowdfunding campaign to raise the budget to make a film about people fighting against government control. It's become a community in and of itself. It's become a force to be reckoned with. The film's potential has been likened to Super Size Me, but for smokers. The idea behind it is to find out the story of the electronic cigarette and the people who use them. For me, this is a substitute for smoking. So if this is a medicine, then is tobacco considered medicine? Vaping for me is great because it means that I can continue to to take the nicotine without all the without all the sort of rubbish that comes with that. It's been market driven from from day one. Um, the users have driven the market. The users have discovered for themselves what works and what doesn't, and they've swapped notes. This documentary also looks at what motivates governments to discredit and try and regulate the electronic cigarette. On the 7th of May in Brussels, Mr. Roberto Bertolini made a presentation at the uh, EU workshop that was appalling. Uh, nicotine can be, you can have overdose of nicotine, I mean, which can create major problems. I mean, uh, both to the gastrointestinal, respiratory, cardiovascular, neurological system. His presentation consisted in uh, cherry picking uh, negative studies, studies that show that e cigarettes are bad, so I confronted him on that and he, he didn't like it. WHO, after all, is here to protect the health of the public and by taking such an approach they are not doing their job. It's difficult to understand the motivation of, of some of these people. Um, I know that there are some extremely good public health advocates in that field who are very surprised and shocked and very disappointed. A large body of their colleagues is, is prepared to focus on the negatives when there are such potential benefits that could be brought to bear here. I think this stuff that's coming out of the World Health Organization, both at um, a sort of global level and in Europe, is just frankly appalling. If a student had presented such a work to me, I would have given him a very bad grade. What would motivate a government or health authority to try and remove a product which is scientifically proven to be less harmful than smoking tobacco. Liquids deliver much fewer chemical compounds than, than smoke. In smoke there are th several thousand chemical compounds that were identified. There are no health concerns associated with the vapor. So to oppose e-cigarettes, it's a perversion of public health. Uh, we've seen these uh, measures cropping up in various parts of the world where they're trying to ban uh, uh, e-cigarettes or at least e-cigarettes with effective doses of nicotine. Nicotine at the dosage used by vapors and smokers is not toxic. Five months into filming, we've already travelled all around Europe filming interviews with politicians. I knew nothing about e-cigs until I first got a letter, handwritten from someone whose life had been transformed by the use of e-cigs. I wrote a blog 
um, sort of giving my opinion on how you know electronic cigarettes should be regulated and I received something like 75 comments on there. So I did a bit of consultation through local newspapers and letters poured in from people with similar situations. The government has to take notice that uh, uh, the rights of these people have to be respected. E-cigarettes clearly are not medicines. Medicines cure people or treat illnesses. Uh, E-cigarettes are products. They're products that people choose to use instead of smoking tobacco cigarettes. I'll go away uh, and put those concerns into a letter which I'll send to the Health Minister. Since, as far as I know, there is no evidence whatever that this product is going to do harm. Quite the reverse. It's, uh, it's there to do some good. Our cameras have witnessed angry armies of vapours protesting against EU regulation. These balloons represent the lives of smokers that would be saved if the European Parliament and Envy Committee got it right today. These are lives that can be saved by e-cigs because e-cigs save lives! Uh, it's important that MEPs understand that there is a, a huge consumer support for uh, having these things as consumer products, not medicinal products. In the UK, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency has already signed up to the idea of medicines regulation and that's supported by the Department of Health in England. Some people say, well, we're leading the way, but I think we're leading the way in the wrong direction. We've met hundreds of vapors, and they're all determined to stay away from burning tobacco. And it's cost the government and the taxpayer absolutely nothing. Uh, so my name's George, and been vaping these four years. I see myself as a recreational nicotine user. When I realized that I could, in tandem, still enjoy smoking in my way, and yet not have to suffer the horrible consequences of that, Everybody I spoke to that smoked had to find out about this. The word nicotine has been associated with the bad health effects of smoking, and unfairly so. I found it to be the answer. Vaping for me was an answer that I will never regret. If their rules were to go ahead tomorrow, everything, will get, everything that we know will get taken off the shelves and sub the health of their citizens. If you continue to sell cigarettes on open sale, you should continue to sell the alternative, the safer alternative. The losers will be the people using e-cigarettes and those who are smoking and looking to get onto e-cigs or hopefully get away from cigarettes at some point. It's quit or die and it's not about quitting or dying for us, it's about changing to something that is 99% safer than smoking. It's not something that needs to be regulated medicinally because I'm not going to go and see a doctor and say I want to reduce the harm from drinking full fat coke. Can I have a prescription for diet coke, please? That's what they can't grasp, but they will have to grasp it because we're not going away. We've interviewed the vendors about the proposed restrictions on nicotine strength and flavorings. Our, our vapors, uh, they've written to their MEPs, they've, they've written to, to, to their local MPs as well. Um, they're very vocal um, about the, uh, the fact that they don't want the, the liberty, that they feel that this is their right. It's not like somebody taking your cornflakes away in the morning, you know, let's get some Weetabix. Um, this is something really much more intrinsic to the person. Take away my ability to find my nicotine and I'll find it somewhere else. Take away this, I'm going to go back to where I was before, which is knowingly killing me. People who just go back to smoking, I mean if I offered you four milligrams of juice or a packet of 20 Benson Edges, what are you going to do? You're going to go straight to the best and edges and you're going to be vape smoking again. The vaping community has united, using social media to get their message across to a global audience. I'm seeing tweets to celebrities, to MPs, to MEPs, using the hashtag AUECIG ban. That is giving us a voice. Here in Germany we have about 2 million e-cigarette users. I am appalled that they plan to classify the nicotine I use in my e-cig um, as a medicine. If the EU's plans go ahead, I'll have to go back to smoking cigarettes. What would be available um, actually doesn't work as well as you might think it works. Please don't medicalise vaping. It would mean that I and thousands of others would return to needing to smoke normal cigarettes. Which effectively means this legislation is going to kill me. It's a recreational thing. I'd I don't want to quit taking nicotine. My life has improved from one simple little invention. 
They're not medicines because I'm not sick. I think banning them is ridiculous. My message to all you MEPs is please don't take this away because the truth is I'll probably go back to cigarettes and I'll probably die as will many of the other vapors here. For a public health issue, so important, and for people not to have their view or their right to vote, it's, it's a disgrace in my eyes. When the ban comes in, um, I won't be able to get it. If this goes through in 2016 and we can't have them, then it's going to put so many people smoking again, it's unbelievable. Vaping has completely changed my life in more ways than just not smoking anymore. Help families live longer. Help children have the parents. Because that's the reason why I did it. And why my family are happy that I now vape and no longer smoke. Europe, no. Leave our e-cigarettes alone. Don't ban e-cigs. Please do not take e-cigarettes away from us. You will kill people. Simple as that. Vapors are getting face to face and challenging their elected representatives. Linda McAvan, Labour MEP for Yorkshire and the Humber, is leading the EU's challenge on e-cigs and recently was interviewed on camera by one of her own constituents. Can I just show you this that is from The Lancet? I was asking Linda McAvan um, about all sorts of questions that we need to be answered. She did seem to be on the defensive quite a lot. Well, I don't know who wrote the, I mean, Lancet publishes different views and the medical profession has been divided to a certain extent. She didn't want to, to look at it. She didn't want to say, yeah, what, what is actually here is right. It's just, it's not what she wants. I don't know who these doctors are, not from the UK. She was actually in one of the sessions where uh, Jacques Suzak um, was actually there and he was one of the authors of that report. You know, my message to Linda and to all those MEPs who, who are trying to introduce restrictive measures is see the big picture, the big opportunity we have here to shift people away from conventional cigarettes onto e-cigs with massive potential health benefits. According to Jeremy Mean at the MHRA, there is nothing currently on the market that would qualify as a, as a medicinal electronic cigarette. The whole point with Jeremy Means when I mentioned what he had said, she'd never heard of that. That's not my understanding of what the MHRA has actually said. He did say that and we've asked for an interview three times and each time he's declined. When the government consulted on how we regulate these products, whether as medicines or as other products, the public health community, the NHS, the public health bodies, all supported medicines regulation. Jeremy Mean won't do an interview, um, probably because of all the flack he got from his little YouTube video, um, which was put up, instantly disliked by anyone who watched it, and then the comments were turned off. But despite the public outcry, some people still can't see this action as a ban. We are not trying to take them off the market, not trying to ban them at all. But when you look at what medicinal regulation would do for the e-cig industry, it's hard to see it any other way. We contacted the MHRA uh, to find out the costs that would be involved in us uh, licensing all of the products that we currently have and the reply we got back was that we would need 900 MA licenses which would cost in excess of £1.8 billion. There's a real danger that MEPs who voted for tight controls on e-cigs forcing them to go through a whole load of regulatory bodies that will be expensive are playing into the hands of the big pharmaceutical or the big tobacco companies. And of course, they're best placed, they have the resources to um, comply with any regulatory measures and testing requirements that may be introduced. The winners in all of this will not be those consumers smoking electronic cigarettes. It will be the pharmaceutical companies because you will end up going to the doctors uh, to get your electronic cigarettes. And of course, my argument continues to be, if I can go and buy 40 cigarettes, why on earth can't I buy an e-cigarette? It's completely ludicrous. And I suspect there'll be many e-cig users who will be going onto the internet and obtaining supplies directly from China or from some other outlet, which will circumvent the rules. And you know, if that helps save lives, if that helps people move away from conventional tobacco cigarettes to, um, to, to, to something which is a much safer product, then I applaud that. I'll welcome it, even if it does mean that European law is being broken.